Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today, I'm going to do a White Sox recap of their first three games of the season. Which, to be brutally honest, haven't gone very well. Now, uh, the as you may or may not know, we opened against the California Angels, or the Anaheim Angels of California County, or whatever they're called. And um, if you recall, back when I did my White Sox comparison to the California Angels, or if you don't recall... Here's a clip from that video where I described what I thought our chances against the Angels would be this year. So that's how the Angels stack up. Now, of course, you know, uh, this is another team, like I said about Detroit. I, I'm going to say the same thing basically about um, these guys, and that is that we should be beating them. So, um, that brings us to reality, what actually happened. Something completely different. Now, uh, I don't know if you've been following the series, but I have a breakdown of the first three games. Now, I know we have another game against the Angels. I just want to get these three out because it made sense for this to be the day that I upload this video, um, you know, and because I've got another one planned for, um tomorrow and I will be doing White Sox recap update videos every so often probably every week but I wanted to do the first three games of the Angels series today so uh, yeah uh, in the first game we had Giolito going up against Dylan Bundy and uh, Lewis Robert ripped a ripped a uh, a double in the second inning. Then he stole uh, third base with two out. And then he scored on a wild pitch. And we were ahead one nothing. And Giolito struck out six of the first nine batters. Now, at this point, you're watching the game, you're thinking, you know, okay, I mean, we've got a tentative one-run lead. Giolito is pitching very well. Um, but it's still kind of hanging in the balance. The Sox got two runners on in the fourth and failed to score any of them. Trout was uh, the first angel to reach base on a two-out walk in the bottom of the fourth inning. And then Giolito followed that with a walk of Rendon. And then uh, Upton singled Trout home and it was 1-1 after four innings. Eaton had a two-run home run in the top of the fifth and gave the White Sox a 3-1 to one lead. And then Max Stassi hit a home run of his own in the bottom of the fifth and made it 3-2 White Sox. So you've got two teams that have some prolific power-hitting dudes in their lineup, and their first two home runs are by Adam Eaton and Max Stassi. Don't ask me. So Giolito leaves after five and a third, and Hewer came on. Hewer, Hoyer, Hoyer, that's how you pronounce his name. Hoyer came on to relieve him. Um, he pitched five and a third, allowed two hits, two earned runs. Now, LaRusa took him out, and last year, if you watched my recap videos last year, I would often have been critical of. Ricky Renneria for taking a pitcher out like Giolito of Giolito's ilk this early in the ball game. But in this particular case, I was 100% in favor of it because I was watching the game and it appeared to me like Giolito was losing it. He was, he was getting gassed. So I was all for it. Aaron Sleggers came on for Bundy in the seventh. Still, we have a 3-2 lead. And then everything fell apart. 
In the eighth inning, there was a single off Bummer's hand, which would have been played by probably the uh, second baseman, uh, Madrigal. And then there was an error by, the, by said Madrigal as he threw the ball to second base and pulled Tim Anderson off the bag trying to start the double play. Return the beer keg. Cancel the dancing girl. So now the Angels have two guys on when there should have been two outs. And that's, you know, as a long-suffering White Sox fan right then, I knew we were going to lose the game. And guess what? We went on to lose the game, 4-3. to three. So, and basically, we lost that game because of errors. Bad play in the outfield. Or, well, bad play in the, you know, in on defense. So that was a little upsetting to see that we lost on opening day. I was hoping to win, get off to a good start there, but didn't happen. So we go to the second game. Now, in the bottom of the first, uh, Shoei Otane tripled with one out, and Trout followed with a dribbler infield hit to third and made it one nothing Angels. Now, here is going to be the story of this first three games, and hopefully the story of this season, or at least one of the good stories for this season. Um, Mercedes gets his first major league hit in the top of the third inning. Abreu jacked a grand slam after Haney eventually loaded the bases and made it 4-1 White Sox at that point. In the top of the fourth, the White Sox start the inning with a Vaughn walk and then three straight hits uh, to score three runs. And at this point, it's seven to one White Sox, and I have to admit, and I probably, I've learned my lesson, I think, going forward. At this point, I was thinking, okay, we have this game in the bag. I mean, this is <clears throat> this is great. We get we're gonna win. I don't even have to stay up the rest of the night, but I did. Well, almost most of the rest of the night. So, um, and in uh, the fourth inning, Mercedes got his second major league hit. Two at bats, two hits. Um, then uh, at the bottom of the fourth, Pujols hits a three-run home run. And makes it 7-4. to four. White Sox still leading. In the fifth, the Angels bring in Chris Rodriguez with one out to make his Major League Baseball debut. And he struck out Moncada and got Vaughn to ground out. In the top of the fifth, Keuchel left due to basically ineffectiveness. I mean, he was... I think he was getting gassed, but not only was he getting gassed, he really wasn't all that great up to this point anyway. And he gave way to Matt Foster after allowing the first two guys to reach. Two guys score when Adam Eaton dropped a catchable fly ball. I nearly flew out of my pants when that happened. Unbelievable. I would have caught that fly ball. So that made it 7-6 to six White Sox. At this point, I'm starting to panic. We went from, we should definitely win this game, to we're going to blow this game. At least in my mind. In the top of the six, Mercedes gets his third hit. He is now three for three. In the bottom of the six, Michael Kopech makes his first appearance of the season, and he was stellar. In the top of the seventh, the White Sox got two runners on, but failed to score. So here you're still a little, little worried. Although Kopech, like I said, was pitching great. In the bottom of the seventh, Kopech completed two innings, six up and six down. Still, it's, uh, you know, at this point, it's still seven to six White Sox. Top of the eighth, Mercedes gets his fourth hit. He is now four for four. You couldn't have written this script any better, but you well, you could have. And you'll see that the script gets better. Uh, the top of the eighth, the Angels strand two runners. It's still seven to six White Sox. Top of the eighth. So I'm thinking, man, I mean, maybe we can hold this. Maybe the bullpen can hold this, but I don't know. 
Top of the ninth, Tim Anderson homered in its 8-6 White Sox. Now I'm starting to breathe a little easier. But then Grandall singled in two runs in its 10-6 White Sox. And the two runners were Abreu and Sliding Billy Hamilton. And then Mercedes doubles in two runs. It's 12-6 Sox, and Mercedes is 5-for-5. Five 5-for-5 five. Five five in his White Sox debut. And that broke a White Sox record of going 4-for-4 four four to start a season. And that was held by Art Shires from the 1920s, I believe, and Ping Bodie, the Ping Bodie. So, yes. So, anyway, at this point, it is 12-6 White Sox, and they brought on Liam Hendricks. They had brought on Liam, Liam Hendricks when it was 7-6 back in the, the previous inning. And uh, and this is, this is another thing that I am also glad that, um, and I'm having lighting problems here. All right, well, I guess my lighting problems are still a problem. Let me swing this around. So anyway, um, where was I? Um, oh yeah, uh, they brought on Hendricks in the eighth, and I love that. Tony Larusa. I have got to say, I was at outspoken critic of Tony La Russa, as old as he is, being the manager of the White Sox. I had wanted A.J. Hinch. I still probably would have preferred A.J. Hinch, but I am feeling a little better now about Tony La Russa. Because he brought on his closer to nail things down in a high leverage situation near the end of the eighth inning instead of waiting till the ninth. Guys like Ricky Renneria and other managers of today, they would have waited until the ninth inning. Come hell or high water, <coughs> excuse me, they would have waited till the ninth. And La Russa didn't do that, and he will show some other signs of being the old Tony La Russa that we all know and love, and I'm getting a little um, more... Um, on board with that as I see him manage the bullpen particularly and, you know, and the team. But anyway, I went to bed with the score 12-6 and Liam Hendricks pitching. I just saw that he came back out for the ninth and I said, okay, I'm going to turn off the game go to bed. I wake up the next day, I find out that we ended up winning 12-8. So we still gave up two more runs. Crazy. So anyway, we did win that game. That was, that was good. I mean, we won the game, but, you know, our defense, again, very shoddy. In fact, I think that was the game where maybe it was that game or maybe it was the third game. Moncada had momentarily bobbled a, uh, a ground ball, and instead of getting the man at second to start the double play, he had to throw to first and get the guy at first. Now, he did get the guy at first. He could have had a double play, though. So the defense is showing, really, that it's got to improve. Now, we go to the next game, and this is um, Alex Cobb versus Lance Lynn. Our new acquisition, Lance Lynn. In the top of the second inning, Mercedes homers. And now he has started his career, if you're keeping track at home, six for six with a double and a home run. And at this point, it's one nothing Sox. Top of the third, the Sox had runners at first and third with two out, but they couldn't score. This will come back to haunt them. Top of the third, Lewis Robert makes an error on the third out of the inning, allowing a run to score for the Angels and tying the score at one apiece. Lewis Robert came in. Um, Tim Anderson was going back on it. Tim Anderson had the ball. And he was calling it. But then Lewis Robert called him off. And as he should, he let Robert attempt to play the ball. What Robert did was play the ball off his noggin for an error. And then Eaton followed that 
insult to injury by making a throwing error on, when the ball hit the pitching rubber and allowed the uh, man at the plate to go to second base. And I believe that was Rendon. So, um, yeah. And then uh, the next batter singled Rendon home, and it was 2-1 to one Angels. Still should have been one nothing White Sox at this point. Top of the fourth, Mercedes goes to 7 for 7 Now it's getting crazy. Now, even if you wrote the script, you wouldn't say the guy started off 7 for 7 We're talking about a 28-year-old rookie who spent 10 years in the minor leagues, bouncing around the minor leagues in like two or three different organizations. 7 for 7 so, uh, and then the White Sox strung together a bunch of hits, including his, to tie the game at two. Top of the sixth, the White Sox start the inning with two hits, and then Mercedes doubles in a run, and it's 3-2 Sox, and Mercedes is 8-for-8. Eight eight. Unbelievable. Top of the seventh, Garrett Crochet comes on, and he, fin in, uh, and he finished off seven batters straight since relieving Lynn in the fifth. And again, I want to say, LaRussa, yes, he took Lynn out at 99 pitches before an inning was over. But again, I think Lynn was starting to get gassed, and you could see it, and so I'm 100% on board. See, that's the difference. Um, LaRussa, I think he has proven that he will take uh, pitchers out when they are starting to show signs of fatigue or ineffectiveness. Ricky Renneria just did it to do it. He just said, okay, yeah, this is five innings, you're done. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to bring in a reliever. So Garrett Crochet finishes off seven batters straight and, um, and with, the, with two outs, and the Sox are still up 3-2 at this point. And you will also see another thing that I'm starting to like about Larusa is the relievers come in, they don't just pitch one inning. They don't just pitch to the three batters they're required to pitch to. They pitch to more batters than that. They'll go two or three sometimes. Now Mercedes flew out to center field to end his streak and make him eight for nine on the season. That was kind of depressing to see. I was really thinking the dude could go nine for nine. Bottom of the eighth, Rendon singled with one out, and Jared Walsh followed with an RBI triple off of Evan Marshall, who now came on to pitch. And that made it a 3-3 tie. And then Upton followed with a two-run home run later on that inning and made it 5-3 Angels, and that is where that would end. So now we are 1-2 against the Angels, and I... I believe we play Sunday night baseball against them. Well, then everyone loses their minds. Uh, Sunday night baseball on April 4th. If you're watching this recording, way after April 4th. So hopefully we win that game. That's going to be Dylan Cease going up against Otani, who's going to be on the mound for them, but was in their lineup for the first three games of the series. So, obviously, we did not manhandle the Angels. We are not playing well against the Angels. Of course, my preseason prognostication did not include for Otani to be in the rotation, but um, Joe Madden has other thoughts on that. So, we'll see how we do tonight, although I have heard that Cease is um, pitching or pitched quite well in preseason has learned a few more things, has tweaked a couple of things, and is pitching really well. But the good signs that came out of the first three games, even though we're one and two, is Mercedes looks like the dude can really hit the ball. And that is great because, again, Collins was not that impressive. Zach Collins has played in the first three games at various times, and he doesn't look that good. And Mercedes could be the backup catcher to Grandall. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, obviously, Zach Collins knows now the pressure is really on because you've got um, Mercedes hitting 889. So Mercedes was one good story. And another good story is um, Tony LaRussa. I'm happy to see LaRussa is the same LaRussa 
he knows how to handle a bullpen. He still knows how to handle a bullpen. He has not forgotten it. it must be like riding a bike. Um, and he knows how to handle a pitching staff. He doesn't. It doesn't look like he's going to take the pitchers out just to take the pitchers out because they should be taken out before the third time through the order. They may. They may have been taken out during the third time through the order, but that was because they were getting gassed, they were getting tired, they were losing their stuff. And La Russa could see that. And when he brings in a relief pitcher, he will bring them in and let them pitch two innings if, they keep, if they're keep if they effective. Maybe even three. Um, he did do that with um, with uh, Kopech, I believe. Michael Kopech? Um, yeah, I think so. He brought him in, and he pitched like two and a third or something like that. Um, so <clears throat> it, it, that's nice to see. That's a good sign. <clears throat> what isn't a good sign is that we are one and two to a team that didn't have very good pitching coming into the season and really still doesn't. Although Dylan Bundy, Bundy is showing that he is much better than I thought he was going to be. So what do you guys think? What are your impressions of the White Sox who are supposed to either win the division or finish second to the Twins? Um, now I am not so uh, confident with the loss of Eloy and the fact that we've lost two out of three to the Angels. I'm not as confident as I was that we can win this division still. So... We'll see what happens. I think the wild card is still in play, obviously. I mean, it's, there's still a long way to go. And La Russa is showing he can handle the team. He can handle the bullpen. He knows what he's doing still. He's not senile yet. So leave a comment. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. All the good stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. It helps me out. And um, I would really love to keep doing this content forever and ever. And, uh, and then we can, uh, you know, we can have a big, fun Sportsman Z party time. So, but for right now, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.